like you do. You are the great I am. You are the excellent one. You are the mighty God. You are the everlasting Father. Oh, yeah. 
God said, your joyful noise rejoices his heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said, because I know you don't do it for show. You don't do it to please anybody. Oh, you don't do it to gain attention. You just want to please his heart.
let me decrease and you increase and whatever you want said, done, whatever, however you want to move, I'm just yours, Lord God. Hallelujah. Not for my glory, but for yours. Not for your my purpose, but for yours. Speaking to your people, let them be built up and changed, edified, whatever they need from you. Cause them to get it, oh God, today. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I honor God for all that he has done. Hallelujah. I honor God for my husband, like I said, almost 30 years. Amen. He has put up with me. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for Pastor Montgomery and only lady. We bless God for them and how they have uh, accepted us here and, and let us, you know, do do a few little things here and there. We appreciate <laughs> the opportunities and we're thankful. We, will, we just want to serve God. We just want to serve God. And I bless God for all of you in your respective places. Thank God for my children. Uh, two of them are right here, David and Noah. Uh, my oldest and Jonathan was here this morning. So thankful for them, and um, I just I'm thankful for uh, restoration. Thankful for those who came every week to rehearse <laughs> <laughs> to help us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. So if nobody else said thank you. Thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Let's get into the word. Psalms 37. Psalm 37. Thank you, Lord. Yes, ma'am. We want to start at verse 1. Fret not thyself because yes. of evildoers. Yes. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Uh -huh. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and yes. wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Mm -hmm. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Mm -hmm. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Mm -hmm. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Mm -hmm. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass, cease from anger, and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers, for evildoers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're focusing on that verse that says, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord, and do good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it with me, choose to trust. Yes. Choose, choose to, to trust. trust. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And um, I, I definitely do not want to let this time pass and not say thank you for everyone from Tabernacle of Prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We appreciate you all for being here. Amen. My brother pastors that church and, and I'm thankful for them, their friends and family. Love them, love them, love them. Love them. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for you all coming. You didn't have to do that and I'm so that makes me happy. Amen. Trusting is a choice. Yes. I want to start with that. Yes. Trusting God is a choice. Mm -hmm. You can choose to do it or you can choose to not do it. Amen. But it's a choice. Amen. 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 No one's going to make you. And God himself is not going to make you trust. Him. Right. It is a choice. There are several occasions in scripture where mankind is admonished to trust God. To put their confidence in him. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, besides the one I just read, we also see it in Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Yes. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. And Isaiah 26 and 3 also says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Verse 4, trust ye in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Whenever there is a command or an instruction to take a particular uh, course of action, or posture in the scriptures, it is assumed that the person who has been instructed either already possesses the capacity to do what they were given instruction to do, or that capacity will be gained in some way. The capacity may be acquired through a gift. God may just impart it to you. Or it may be acquired through growth, learning the word, studying the word, growing in your understanding of the scriptures. As we grow in faith and grow in our understanding of the word of God, our capacity to trust God increases. We gain supernatural strength to go through while maintaining our confidence in God. As we grow and as we learn, our capacity increases. It's just like a baby. When a baby is learning to walk, it doesn't have much confidence all right, all right. when it's first learning to do that. It toddles around, it's unsteady, it doesn't want you, that baby doesn't want you to let go of their hand because they're not trusting so much on what they can do on their own. You, you know that that baby really has the capacity to walk, but the baby doesn't know they have the capacity to walk. God knows we have the capacity to do more in him and for him than we're doing most times. But we don't have a whole lot of confidence in what, you know, we can do. Or we don't have confidence in the God who's saying, step out. We don't have that capacity, that confidence in the God who's saying, get out the boat. We don't have that confidence in that, that, that one who's telling us, you can do this. We don't have that confidence in the one that says, Lord, I'm with you always, even until the end of the age. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Oh, yeah, I know you said that. I know you ever were present at the same time. That's good, but... Uh... But he's challenging us. And as we grow in him and as we have experiences with God, the Bible says in Daniel, the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits because you get to know him you get to know his ways and the way he operates hallelujah sometimes God will impart to us a certain level of grace when we go through some difficulties but most of the time he wants us to grow by getting to know him getting to know his word studying his word he gives us joy unspeakable yes he does and full of glory for the joy of the Lord is our strength trusting God is a choice and we must choose to do so we must choose to do so daily daily dying to ourselves daily that's an act of trust that's an act of faith Dying to ourselves daily is an act of trust. It must be maintained and sustained when challenged by circumstances, situations, and consequences. Do we trust God one day? Then totally forget to consider him the next day. Do we trust him on Sunday and by Wednesday? We can't let him know. You know, doing what we do. Do we seek him regularly? Right. Are we looking for him? Pastor said the other day, and that just blessed me. There's always a presence. The presence of God yeah. will be there. Yeah. But we have to be looking for yeah. him. We have to be aware. We have to be cognizant of the fact that there is a God who wants to lead and guide us. 
But we have to be looking for his leading. Amen. We have to be aware. We have to be wanting that. Amen. Are we inquiring in his presence? Yes. We were reading in Proverbs 3 and 6. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. That is preceded by trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. Then you can in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Are we acknowledging him in all of our ways? Or do we have a selection? You know, do we compartmentalize the Lord? Do we compartmentalize the Lord in our lives? God, you got this and this, but these five over here, I got you. I got I can handle that. You don't even need to be bothered with that. You know, I know what to do with that part. And he, but the scripture said, in all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Are we consistent in our seeking of his face? Are we consistent in seeking his wisdom? The Bible said, he that lacks wisdom should ask of the giving God, who gives to all men liberally and upbraided not. When we ask, we ask in faith, because it's going to be given to us. Are we seeking his guidance? Are we saying, Lord, direct my path? Are we seeking his God is knowing that the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord? Are we seeking him? Are we seeking his help? We try to handle it on our own and God said, I, I, I can help you. Like, why, are you why are you trying to figure that out? And God already worked out. Okay, are we seeking him? Are we seeking his power? Hallelujah, hallelujah. We can't do it all on our own, but we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. He is our power. He is our strength. Are we seeking his support? Are we seeking his direction? Are we just going on through life hoping that, you know, God will just join forces with whatever we have? Come on, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Is God... A regular part or participant in our everyday lives, or is he an afterthought? All right. All right. You own it. Is he an afterthought? All right. After we got in trouble, uh, after things didn't work out, after, after things turned bad, is he an afterthought? Right. Our trust in God must be maintained and sustained when challenged by circumstances. Situations and consequences. So what is a circumstance? A circumstance is a fact or condition connected with or related to an event or action. What circumstance do you find yourself in? Has some life event perhaps or action brought a particular condition in your life? Have you lost a loved one? Uh, maybe lost a job or relationship? Have you experienced a recent illness? Have you begun a new relationship? Mm -hmm. Have you gotten a new job? Mm -hmm. A raise? A promotion? Has a new opportunity come your way? You see, every event that brings a circumstance or a particular condition in your life don't, doesn't always have to be negative. Amen. Sometimes it can be good things that happen. Sometimes they're good and favorable. The question we need to ask is, no matter where I am, am I trusting God? Am I trusting God still when I got the raise? Am I trusting God when I did? Am I still going to trust God no matter what? Am I trusting God when the relationship is going well? And am I going to trust God when it's not? The truth of the matter is, that we might find that we trust God the least when everything is going well. Because we think everything's good, we got it. We may even begin to think that the good in our lives came only by our own effort. But God wants us to remember King Nebuchadnezzar. God raised him up, made him mighty. Yes, he did. And he conquered nations. And then he got the big head and thought it all came by himself. And God said, okay. 
And then he had this dream, and he was wondering what it meant. And then he had to tell him, uh, okay, let it come to somebody else. But you know, I'm just going to check out here. You may not like this, but you, this is just, I, I'm trying to figure out, Daddy, you so good, you have found a nice way to tell that man he's about to lose his mind. Right. <laughs> All right. He found the best kind of way to tell that man you are about to go crazy, and God is ordained it for you. <laughs> To, that create a domino effect. For example, you could get seriously ill. So ill that you can't work. And can you see that domino effect? 
okay, I can't work, so I'm not bringing in any income. I have a doctor's report, uh, a report that is not good, that is not favorable, and it's so serious that I cannot work. Yeah. So there's no money coming in. Maybe you have a child that's in college and you got bills due, you got a mortgage, you got debt, right. you got whatever right. you got. Right. And, and, and because of this serious illness, now I got a foreclosure notice. Okay. Now right. my children's child school is saying, we need you to pay the tuition and you don't have a dime to pay. Right. Or maybe you're wondering, how am I going to put food on the table, let alone have the strength, the energy to cook it? So it's a domino effect. You're in a whole situation. God is challenging us. Even in your domino whole situation, I need you to still trust me. And then, <laughs> he takes it one more step. Consequences. This is a result or effect of an action or condition. The result in factors from our bad choices or from our good choices. We are experiencing what we are currently experiencing either because of our own actions or maybe even the actions of others. There are consequences. Perhaps we made a huge error somewhere down the line. All right. Or we were supposed to do something and we didn't do it somewhere down the line. And we are now dealing with the consequences. You know, people say you made your bed, you might as well lay in. You know, it's your bed, whether you lay in it or not. It's your bed. We are plagued by the consequences of our own making. You may think this is no lo this no longer warrants trusting God because I messed up. This is my fault. Mm -hmm. And that's the time when the enemy wants to separate us from the one who loves us. Because he said, you did this. This is your fault. You, you know, you got to figure out how to get yourself out of it. I, I, I don't have enough knowledge to get myself out of this. That's the time when you need to run to his arms. Run to his arms. The Bible said we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. But he was in all points tempted like as we, yet without sin. He didn't mess up. But he's saying, come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find grace to help you. Grace isn't just God saying, okay, I forgive you, you're good. But it's also God saying, let me help you. Yes. It's God empowering you for the next thing. So even if you made your bed hard, God can help you get out of it. Hallelujah. God said, and even as I was preparing this, the Lord said to tell you, trust me because I am your redeemer. I will redeem your life from destruction. Trust me because I am your redeemer. He said, though you fall, you will not utterly be cast down. I'm going to uphold you with my hand. Even if you messed up, I can fix it. If you think about the children of Israel, they messed up so much, it amazes me. But then I look at my own son and say, mm, okay. I got that one. Okay. But over and over again, over and over again, he said, I'm going to show you mercy. And I'm going to get you back. They remain his chosen. They remain his chosen. God said the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. I have not changed my mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Katanya, God said the gifts and callings are without repentance. He has not changed his mind Amen. about what he has called you and gifted you to do. The devil would love for you to sit down and say, somebody else, Lord. But God said to tell you and remind you, I have not changed my mind. What he's called you to do and who he has gifted you to be. Hallelujah. 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 God wanted me to share too with you 
the other day, uh, Pastor Lee shared with me, God, that, that the enemy knows my name, you know, mm -hmm. because of my prayer life. Mm -hmm. But God said to tell you that's the same thing about you. And that's why the enemy fights you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Because he wants you silent. He wants you. Oh! But God said from your childhood, you were gifted and anointed to pull down strongholds. And the devil wants to shut you up. Hallelujah. But God is calling you to don't let the devil shut you up. Hallelujah. <laughs> God said lives hang in the balance. You see, it's, it's in the quiet, but God said lives hang in the balance. Lives hang in the balance. Oh, oh, my God, 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 my God. He, the devil wants you to pull off your armor and go hang it up on the wall. The devil wants you to pull it off and go hang it up on the wall. Oh, but God said, I want you to stay on the wall. Don't let the enemy stop you in any way, in any circumstance. <laughs> And God said, don't worry about your finances, your resources, your whatever. He said, because I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. I, okay. That's what I was talking about. Okay. So there are consequences. We, we will still need to trust God no matter what's going on. It, it means to have a firm belief in God. And I'm going to go on because uh, I know our time is far spent. Uh, assured reliance on God's character. Because some things happen in our lives that make you wonder, God, where were you when this happened? Yes. Where were you when this loss took place in my life? Where were you when the enemy seemed to get an upper hand in my circumstances? God, where were you? And he reminds us that time and chance happens to everybody. Hey. Man that is born of a woman mm -hmm. is of a few days. And those days may be full of trouble. Hallelujah. And we get surprised when trouble sits at our door. God, but I'm yours. Why, why you let trouble come? He said, everybody got it. Everybody, it's going to be some kind of trouble that's going to come to your house. So we should not be surprised. That's part of our lives. But sometimes we go through, and I, 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 I was listening uh, to Sister McGee yesterday. When you lose so many people in such quick succession, you wonder, God, where were you when all of this was happening? He was there all the time. He was there all the time. Waiting patiently in line. He was there. Patiently. 
God said, I felt your heart. When you grieved, I grieved. Not because I didn't know their end, but because my daughter was hurting. But because my daughter was hurting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said, I love you. That's what the enemy wanted to tell you. Okay, God is not paying attention. He doesn't care. God said, I love you. But he said, I'm here for you. Because you're mine. You're my child. You're my girl. I love you. You're mine. You're mine. You're mine. I love you. I love you. Through every situation, I love you. Hallelujah. 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 But we have to choose to trust him. We have to choose to trust him. We have to choose to trust him. Daniel had to trust in God. He had to trust in God when it was plotted against him. And said, we don't want you to be the only one over the kingdom. Uh-uh. We're going to work this out by the, the king to sign a decree. So if you go and worship anybody else, we say, we can't get you on your work, work ethic. Because we ain't got nothing against you. But they were plotting. Yeah. Mm. Ha, 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 ha. They were plotting. Yes, yes they were. Yes. But Daniel trusted in God. Yes. When he was threatened to lose his job, he trusted God. When he was threatened with the lion's den, he trusted God. When he was threatened to be overthrown, he trusted God. Now that took some trust because when it was going good, Daniel prayed three times a day. When he was elevated to one of the top three in the kingdom, he prayed three times a day. And when he knew that the writing was signed, he prayed three times a day. He did not change. He continued to trust God. And God is challenging us to trust. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop because God wants to move. Oh, yes, 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 yes. He wants us to trust him. I trust in God. I trust in God. My Savior. Yes, Hallelujah. God is faithful. God is bigger than our mountains. He is bigger then I